Hello, my friends, hello. Hello, my friends, hello. I'm too lazy to pick up my ukulele. It's just sitting right down there. Hello, my friends. Hi. I'm a little lazy today, and I'll tell you why. Um, but first, hey, welcome. It's me, Kaylee. Kaylee Cross Stitch, and this is my channel about cross stitch. And it's becoming more of like life updates, and y'all are really sweet. So I am nearing 600 subscribers. What? Hi, welcome. Um, you're signing up for sporadic progress. Maybe that's a, a good way of saying it. So it is August 25th today, and it is two days before I see students in my classroom. Well, technically four, but what's a weekend? Because <sighs> I have lots of planning to do. So the reason I didn't feel like taking my ukulele out is because I have so many music ideas like bouncing around in my head right now because um, I've never taught middle school before. And so I'm like, will they like this kind of activity? Will they like this kind of song? Will like this? Will and, and it just, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot in my head. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I have moved to Baltimore, Maryland this year, and I will be teaching middle school choir. So I taught elementary school for six, six, for three years, and this will be my fourth year of teaching, but in a very different district and with different age group. Like, you might think that sixth to seventh grade is not that long, but it's a, it's, it's a big jump in whatever. Anyway, so I have two whips to show you today. I'm going to show you my floss organization because there's been some updates in my floss organization life. And it's, uh, it's part of the common thread stitcher tag on Instagram, which I didn't realize that I could do. And I think I realized it too late when I started seeing people's posts. So I'm going to show you my floss organization. Um, and yeah, that's it, I guess. Um, I don't know what this uh, what this camera is doing to my face, but I'm awfully red. Let me just jump to a haul section and show you what I got. Uh, yeah, I'll do this one. I got this little um, light slash phone holder thing or or camera holder it can be, and this has two LED lights on it, and it like clamps to your to your desk. Is that what me? No, I look red this way too, but. It's got some, it's some pretty good lighting, so prepare for my Stitch With Me's to be more fancy. I still am thinking about getting a camera, but a different camera, because this one is blurry up close. And I use my phone and it glitches sometimes, but anyway. Um, so that's my haul, and, and these lights are very bright here. Let me, let me change the settings. Let's see if that works. Ugh. Oh, I'm less red. There you go. Okay, so... I pulled out an oldie. I pulled an oldie out, and that is this guy. My supersized USA. Forgive me while I while I resize this a little bit. I want this a little bigger. There we go. Oh, Dylan's back from putting our new license plates on. This is Supersized USA. This is a pattern from Cross Stitch V on Etsy. And it is enormous. It's 999 across by 747 uh, tall. And this is where it was last time that you saw it. I think this, I, this photo is dated May 5th. So it's been a while since y'all have seen this. And um, yeah, I put in a couple thousand stitches. I would tell you exactly how many, except I didn't count them. Or I didn't write it down on Saturday. But as you can see, I filled in two more mountains, um, a little bit more of Oregon, and these uh, logs, and then the trees. So I am using a parking method on this. This is 25 count, two over one. So that means two strands of floss over one square. And it is 10 stitch, half stitch, since there are 700,000 stitches in this. I was like, oh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do that full cross. Um, and I like 25 count, but I want to start something on 28 count. Um, oh, I did do a little bit up here too. 
I like, I forgot how much I like stitching on this. This is really fun because I can, you know, depending on my mood, I can stitch confetti or I can stitch blocks of color or I can stitch what it has so much variety. So this is like kind of blocks of color, but a few, a few colors in the green. Or if I want to stitch a block of color, I just go here and stitch all this pink or Oregon has some nice big blocks. Um, but I've started and I haven't stitched very many, very many full coverage. Um, and tr I haven't really tried out very many fabrics, but this gets really thick if I do, I mean, in the heavy confetti areas, obviously. But I'm, I'm trying to play around with if I do cross country um, in the diagonal because switching every one or rethreading your needle every one stitch is pretty is pretty tedious, especially since there's so many colors. Like on some of my other projects, I just leave it on the needle and I stick it in the grime guard or something. But this I have to I have to rethread every time I park my thread. Or I have to rethread my needle every time I park because it's uh, there's only one stitch because this part is is kind of confetti heavy, so I've been playing around with that. Um, this is my back. Jeez, this lighting! This lighting is really good. And the colors are popping. It's vibrant. Yeah. So I, I've been carrying quite a, quite a ways, and I don't. I, I've I've decided I don't don't care if I carry very far on this, or if I carry on this. Yeah. But I, I think I told you everything about that. Boy, I feel very long winded today. Six minutes already? Seven minutes? Okay. Bye. And then I also uh, I didn't work very much on this, but I put in a, a few stitches on Moroccan sampler. And I don't have a progress picture because it's it's not that much. So I put in mm, this blue last night. This blue section. And I'm going to keep, I don't know, I, I think I'm going to keep going on this. This is a nice end of the day. Just put in a few stitches and call it good. This is on 32 count. Uh, mocha, I think. Yeah, uh, linen and it's two over two this is gorgeous I love this this is from cliffside stitches on Etsy and oh, cliffside stitches has an Instagram and they followed me <laughs> that, is that, it's so cool to like know that designers are following following the progress of their designs so yeah rock and sampler um, plans wait I completely forgot. I stitched on. I stitched on beach. Yeah. I don't know where a progress picture is. I finished a diagonal. Did I show you this? I don't remember. Well, I'm working on this. Manhattan Beach. I love this piece. I got, oh yeah, I got to a. Look, Laura, Laura, I got to a tree. <laughs> this is Manhattan Beach, uh, retired Hayde, and it is stitched one over one on 40 count half stitch. So they're teeny, teeny, tiny stitches. I like this lighting. It makes it look very, very true to color, I guess. It's bright, but whatever. So that's Manhattan Beach. I don't know how many stitches I got. Boy, you can really tell my mood by if I track my progress diligently. And lately, it's just been, you know, not really a priority to track my progress. Once I get, once I get more comfortable with my schedule and everything and all that, then, then I'll pr probably be more diligent. So I wanted to show you my floss organization and I decided to have my master set of DMC just in a master set. So if I'm doing a smaller project, like my Moroccan sampler only has a few colors or like smaller projects that aren't full coverage, 
or that are just don't use as many colors, I put the flosses in a little bag, and then I put the project in a bag with the flosses, theoretically. <laughs> it's kind of kind of a mess right now. Um, but then I know that I have all those flosses, and I can, I can put any extra skeins that I have, like this. I'm gonna show you how I bobbinate today. Uh, and then it's like that. But I have multiple full coverage projects started now. I have my giant Supersize USA. I have, uh, I have the Manhattan Beach. I'm gonna start barnyard animals. And I kind of want to start another one because why not? Uh, and so I decided that I would just have a master set of DMC and whenever I need a color, I'll just put it on my shopping list and get it. Now, something that's making this easy for me, I mentioned this last time, last week, is an app called Thread Stash. Thread Stash. There's the icon. Oop, it's blurry. Yeah, I got Twitter. I'm not going to tell you about that. So what this app does is it keeps track of your thread box. Let me turn off the blue, blue light filter on here. Can't see anything. It shows you your thread box, your shopping list. If you want to put projects together. And then some of these are available with a premium. I haven't used it enough to, to really want to buy the premium yet, but I'm sure I will because so it, it shows you all the threads that you have. So I've inputted, it does take a while to input all your threads, but um, I'm just gonna use it and see if it helps me keep track of extra skeins that I have. So like, like as you can see, I have DMC 601. What happened? And I have <laughs> one. What a tutorial, what a, what a tour. It's real good. So I have two of DMC 740. I promise that this says two. <laughs> so then if you want to, you can edit it and you can update the quantity of, of what you have. Nope, it's still gonna be washed out. Okay, so you can, if you, if you run out of a skein, you can do that or you can add it if you buy it. So then anywhere, if you're in your projects, like say you wanted to, so for example, I think I'm gonna use this for my smaller projects. So if I take things out of my master set, I'll put them in the project. So project threads, this is Iowa, it has these colors. And so say I run out of 37, 13 while I'm working on Iowa, or I know that I'm gonna need some soon, then I can go edit, or I can go, oh, it shows you your shopping list. So I can add it to my shopping list. I need one of those. And then it automatically puts it on my shopping list. So then when I go to my shopping list, back, back, shopping list, it added it to my shopping list. And I do have a bunch on here because I'm gonna start a new project soon, my barnyard animals, and I need some more colors. So maybe I'll update you on that. I, I think a Stitcher started this app, but I'm not organized enough to, to tell you who it was, but I'll, I'll see if I can link it below. I think I was able to last week, or yeah, last time. So hopefully that will help my shopping list and, and keep me a little bit more organized because I would, before I would kit up the floss with the project, but then, you know, there are some colors where you only need like a few stitches of each color. And I didn't want to just keep buying duplicate skeins and putting them in a different project. And I'm not going to be traveling with my full coverage. So I might as well just keep them all in one spot and have it all available in one spot. Now, um, I do have some that are multiples, so whatever. But yeah, I, I put all of my colors in numerical order. And then they fit into three so far with only like, I would say maybe 20 duplicates 
duplicate bobbins. So I was going to show you because I've had people interested in, in, in floss organization before. So I, I, take this if you want to use my, use this method if you want to, but I'm, I want to show you how I bobbinate because it, it's a little bit different than, than the traditional way of bobbination. So hang on, let me get this extra thread off because I know that I'm going to need this soon because I only have one length of it left. So what I do is I take this full skein and I separate it into six lengths that are the same, the same length. Now it's a little bit confusing because you have to fold your floss in thirds for this, but I'm going to see if I can explain it. Hang on. Let me see if I can explain it. So if you don't already know, I don't, I don't know who's watching my channel, but if you, if you don't know the bobbin is easiest or the the skein is easiest to unravel if you take from the end that has the the longer piece so i just slide both of these off and i take this longer piece or the longer piece end and i keep that end so what i'm going to do is double the full eight yards that's what it is right eight yards i'm going to double the eight yards and then I'm going to fold that, that folded half in thirds. And I do it in a quick way, eight meters, 8.7 yards. So I hold this end and then I unravel the whole thing and I make sure that like it's going, I don't know, somewhere where I can, where it won't tangle very much. So I just kind of like spread it out. Unravel the whole thing until I can grab the other end and half it up. And sometimes it comes off like this. You're just like, all right, all right. Okay, so here's my other end. So I take the ends of the skein and put them together. And then in order to fold this in thirds, I start sliding it down. And then this is going to be my end where I have um, all the ends that I want to cut to get it into six equal. So I just put the, the folded over my, over my finger like this. So now I have two, four, six. And so I have one loop that I'm going to pull to get them even. So I need to separate the folded with my hand and just stick it in there. So I know I'm going to catch the the third loop and then I just pull I don't know if that makes any sense but here are my six lengths maybe watch it again maybe find somebody else to explain it if you want I know some people that just fold it twice and you get eight lengths but I like this length especially for loop start so then I, I have my two ends that I that I got at the beginning and I have the two that I draped over my finger. And then what I do is I take these three loops and I combine them with the ones draped on my finger. And then this is going to be the top and I'm going to cut these four, no, five, oh. Yeah, that's right. I'm gonna cut these five. Where's the scissors? Here's the scissors. But I want to get them mostly even. Hey Darcy, here's a big scissors. No more tiny scissors. Oh, it's a crappy big scissors. Okay, and then I have these six lengths of floss that are even. Now, I really like the idea of like floss drops and being able to store your floss, but I don't like the idea of storing them like this. So I feel like this is kind of happy medium between like liking the neatness of bobbins, but not liking how much it crimps the, the floss and also like how you're constantly unwinding and, and winding. So now I have six lengths and I take one off 
because this is going to be my working length. And then the rest of these, I try to line up the ends as best I can. But you know what? It might get a little messy, and that's okay. And then I use my bobbin as a floss drop. So I put my loops through, through this. Boy, is this even helpful? I don't know. Probably if I were like better about like production quality, maybe it would be. And then I just loop this like a like a floss drop. And wind this up. Wind it up. Do do wind it up. And then a lot of the bobbins that I've been buying have a bigger a bigger space here, but I just like wind it until I have the end and then I just stick it through there and then your working length can just wrap around that to make it a little bit neater and then if you need a length of floss you can just unravel your working length and grab one out of that instead of, uh, instead of like one long thing that's how I do it if you want to use that feel free to. Um, and if you have any more questions, you can always message me on Instagram and be like, hey, how did you do that? You didn't explain it very well. <laughs> That's my mind how it's working right now. I don't know. I need to stop talking in my, in my low voice because my voice gets tired when I do that. Huh. Oh, really? Really, voice teacher. Okay. Um, my plans are, I'm starting Barnyard Animals in September because it is hashtag Stitch and Mommy turns 40, Sal, Sarah, the Stitch and Mommy, and she's been really cool and commenting on my videos sometimes because she inspired me to do the 40 count. So I'm going to start Barnyard Animals on 40 count using her method of stitch left to right, top to bottom, and one length of floss at a time. So. I'm excited about that um, and I'm gonna keep I don't know I'm just gonna keep working on what I want when I want so and I suppose for sampler September I'll, I'll count this if I'm gonna participate oh, why not why not it's a sampler so yeah um, thanks for hanging out with me <sighs> 22 minutes I don't know how I recorded 22 minutes of footage because it feels like I should have only had two um, yeah I'm not gonna sing my song today. I'm really sorry. You can go back to one of the other ones and watch that, I guess, <laughs> because I don't, I don't feel like singing today. Um, but I'll see you on Sunday, and I decided on a time. I'm going to go live 9.30 Eastern time, 9.30 Eastern time on Sunday mornings, because at 11 o'clock my time, Eastern time, which is 8 a.m. for her, Michelle Bandy goes live on Twitch. So um, I'm going to move so that we can all participate in the lives um yeah thanks for watching i will see you on sunday and next week bye you can still hear me oh <laughs> okay bye